Hello, my mathematicians. This is Miss Foster with Math and Focus, Grade 4. Chapter 4, Lesson 3, Line Graphs. Line graphs are great if you want to show the data behind things that change over time. As with tables, we're going to have a horizontal axis, which we call the x-axis, and a vertical axis, which we call the y-axis. Let's take a look at some line graphs. In this line graph, we have the information presented in a table, but also down here in the graph. And once more, we're going to want to pay attention to titles and labels. The title for both the table and the line graph are the same, the distance from Ryan's home. But then in the table, we have the time after the bus trip begins, which is here on the top row. And I notice that that's been added down here at the bottom in the horizontal x-axis. So this right here will show that information. Whereas the second row in our table shares about the distance from Ryan's home in meters. And M by itself means meters. And the MIN period is an abbreviation for minutes. So I can see on our Y vertical axis right here that we are looking at the distance from Ryan's home. And by representing it in a graph like this, we can consider the information in some different ways. So it starts here from Ryan's home. And it says that this first data point, number one right here, in the first minute, he got 250 meters from his house. But oh my goodness, do you see those numbers down there? There is no 250 here. It goes halfway. And they even gave you these dotted lines so you could calculate. The, the halfway point between 0 and 500 would be 250, just like half of 50 is 25. The first question asks us, how far is Ryan from his home after three minutes on the bus? Here's one minute, two minute, three minutes, and then I go up here to find how far away he is. They've added these nice little red lines for us. If I trace this across, I see him at a halfway point between 1,000 and 1,500. So that would be 1,250, is how many meters away from his home he is at the third minute. I'm going to put the M right there to let you know that we're counting meters. Number two says, after an unknown number of minutes on the bus, Ryan is 2,500 meters from his home. Hmm. This time I know the distance, but not the time. So let's go up the distance on our y-axis. Here's 2,500. And they've drawn this nice blue line for you across to the intersection between that information and the time. And if I go down here, I see that he reached that place six minutes on the bus. The bus stopped at a bus stop between the blank and blank minutes. Ooh, this one is tricky. Well, let's see. Here is the first minute of his trip. And here's the second minute. It, the distance is growing. He's going away from his home. Here, he's still going away from his home. And maybe not as quickly, but between three and four minutes, he's still going away from his home. Between minutes four and five, he does not get any farther away from home. So I'm guessing that would be a bus stop. Isn't that interesting? We can actually read the picture to let us know when it's standing still. What was the increase in distance from Ryan's home from the first to the third minute? Well, he starts at 250 meters from home, and he goes to 1,250 meters from home right here. 1,250 minus 250 is 1,000. So we could say that he had increased his distance from home by 1,000 meters. After how many minutes of its journey did the bus turn around and travel in the direction of Ryan's home? Whoa, this is hard, but I've really got to think of my titles here. The green Y vertical axis is the distance from Ryan's home. He's going farther away and farther away and farther away and he stayed the same distance away at the bus stop and went way farther away. But do you see this? The distance between him and his home starts to get smaller. That tells me that at six minutes, it turned around and went back in his direction. 
that often happens with bus routes. Bus routes often kind of go in a bit of a circle and maybe they're not straight like this. Maybe they go all over the place. But then they usually go back along the same route because they've learned that people want to go away from home and back to home. During which one minute interval was the bus moving the fastest? Well, if it's staying completely slow between four and five, which one does it go farthest away from his house in that time? You can see between three and four, it just goes a little bit. I notice that between one and two, it goes more than that. But look at the difference between minute five and six. Wow, maybe the speed limit changed. Maybe the traffic got better. I'm not sure, but the one minute interval where I see the bus going the fastest is from five to six minutes. And that's how you would show that. Let's take a look at one more line graph together. The line graph shows the cost of a type of wire sold in a hardware store. And the title tells us exactly that, the cost of different lengths of wire. Let's take a look at our different axes. Our horizontal axis down here tells us the length of the wire in meters. And the vertical y-axis over here tells us the cost of the wire in dollars. So what that means is that at one meter here, it is equal to this many dollars. But oh my goodness, what could that be? Well, right here it says three dollars. If I take three dollars, and I divide it into two parts. What would that be like? And here we are once again using that division. Two goes into three dollars one time. So let me take away two whole dollars. We know that one meter of the wire costs at least one dollar. And that leaves us with one more. But wait a minute. In an earlier lesson, we remembered that half of one dollar is 50 cents. And if I take the dollar and regroup it into 10 dimes, it's much easier to see that I'll have five dimes in each group and no pennies. So this distance right here is one dollar and 50 cents. Now that we've taken a moment to understand the graph, let's try answering some questions about it. In question number seven, it says the graph shows that two meters of wire cost a certain amount of dollars. Here's two meters on the meter axis, and if we go up to the point where it intersects with the y-axis and come over, we see that two meters of wire cost three dollars. Now you can leave it like this, but if you want to go ahead and put those cents in there, you can do that as well. And I apologize for my messy zeros. The graph also shows that when the cost is $7.50, the length of the wire is blank meters. Hmm, well $7.50 is $1.50 more than six. So I say that it's right in this spot. And if we follow this line horizontally over and then drop it down vertically, we can see that the length of meters you can get for $7.50 is five meters. Eight. Four meters of wire costs what? Well, I'm coming here to four, I'm going up and over and finding that costs six dollars. Eight meters of wire, now here's something. The slope of this graph is very regular. It goes up at very regular intervals. It doesn't change all over the place like the bus route did. So I could say that if four meters cost six dollars and eight is two times four, then the cost would be two times six, which is 12. But if you would like to look over here at eight, we can go all the way up here and all the way over and see that I'm right. Question nine asks, when the cost is $9, the length of the wire is blank meters. Here's nine, I'm tracing it over to where it intersects and dropping down to find that equals six meters. When the cost is $10.50, the length of the wire is blank meters. Well, it doesn't say $10.50 here, but we already figured out that one vertical space is $1.50. So if I add $1.50 to $9, this is where $10.50 would be. I'm traveling along the horizontal line there, then dropping down the vertical axis to find out that would get you seven meters. Find the length and cost of a wire at point A on the graph. Here's A. A is three meters in length. I can drop down and see that. And at point A, I can also come over here and find that it's halfway between three and six. Three plus $1.50 would be $4.50. And 
And my friends, I am doing this particular problem with you because question 11 has been really, really hard for a lot of kids in a lot of different classes. So let's do this one together. It says use the graph to find the missing numbers below. What is the increase in the cost of wire for every one meter increase in length? Now, we actually already figured that out here when we were just working to understand the graph. What that means is every time it goes up one, it goes up by $1.50. And so you can see down here I filled in that $1.50 because we figured that out. Every time it goes up, same amount. But then the cost changes as we go, doesn't it? So one meter between one and two, one meter is $1.50, but then two meters is $3. Now we're going the distance of another meter. What is the price right there? Just like we figured out in question number 10, it's $4.50. If I add another $1.50, how much will four meters cost? Well, we already figured that out too. Four meters cost $6, just like this. Friends, the questions that they'll ask you about the line graphs that we practice on when we're face to face will ask you to go into this level of detail to really wrestle with the graph and so that you can learn to understand it better. Friends, thanks for reading line graphs with me. Oh, I love line graphs. So much fun. Bye bye for now.